My name is Wallace Wong and I'm from Canada. The reason why I just wanted to get a hair transplant actually goes way back a couple of things. So A, fam family genetics is a big one. Um, my mom's side, my grandparents, they are, they're kind of balding. They have that sort of, sort of gene in them. Um, and then secondly was, I'm also a cancer patient. So this year, I mean, cancer survivor, not a patient anymore. This is 16 years of recovery. Um, but when I did diagnose that I was having cancer, I did an intense six months of chemotherapy and radiation. So I did lose a lot of my hair, um, sort of weakened my hair overall. Um, and then lastly, it was sort of due to over the pandemic. So in the last three years, um, I've been very, very safe with my family just due to we had um, elderly, I had my grandparents and family was sort of immunocompromised. So we didn't really go out. Um, and that also caused me to sometimes not eat um, not have proper nutrition, not sleeping well, a lot of stress. Um, and as a content creator myself right now, when I started doing photos and I started doing videos, I noticed that my hair was sort of receding. Um, and then eventually, more so now, what happened is um, as an entrepreneur, as someone who has kind of started three new businesses that are all kind of babies, um, it's a lot of stress and trying to balance it all. Um, while still trying to eat healthy and, and taking care of my and the whole grandparents thing and so all that just led to a lot of stress and essentially I started seeing a lot of my hair fall. What I mean by a lot is um, every time I shower it would just be hair everywhere, just styling my hair, you'd see hair fall off and it just never felt good. It never felt good especially if your career is sort of in front of the camera like this. Um, so that is kind of the reasons what have led me to here um, at Root Hair Clinic. If I'm gonna be honest, I'm actually pretty pretty scared for it. Um, the reasons for it, no one, no one likes surgeries, A. But B, it's also um, knowing that we're kind of in a foreign country, right? If things happen, whatnot. Uh, but also I saw some of the videos beforehand of sort of past clients, and rightfully so, you need to, to make sure that you know, you know what's gonna happen. Um, but I'm a little squeamish when it comes to that kind of stuff. You know, I'm, as a chef, I can butcher animals and all these kind of things, but when it comes to sort of human surgery and like sort of stuff, that kind of kind of gets me there. Um, so I am nervous. I'm going to If we do an incisional method, you would get 4,500 to 4,700 hairs. So you can just think of it as getting hairs between 4,000 and 5,000 hairs. If the doctor uh, actually talks about FAE, he recommends to do FAE with about 4,500 hairs. You know that there's a difference between two surgery methods, right? Yes, I was going to say I'd love to sort of get like ah, one more example. It's very important to think about these two methods. So the first one is actually about hairstyle. If you want to make your hairstyle really, really short, then the doctor usually recommends that you eat non-incision. Okay. 
Some people think FUE is completely scarless, but you still get very small kind of uh, mole types of um, scars here at the back and the areas that the doctor took it out with the non incision method. But these are really, really much less visible than the scar from the FUT, so it's uh, possible to make your hair style much shorter. So, the, that's the first one, and the second one is actually about the risk of further hair loss, right? Yes. For some people with a very bad more hair loss, they might need a second or even a third surgery later on in their lives. Thank you.